The setup you can see here, rather untidily arranged, is a classic demonstration of resonance called Barton's pendulums. There are five pendulums of different lengths. There is a sixth at the end, which is the same length as the centre pendulum. This sixth one is called the driver, and you'll see why. Taking the driver and swinging it firmly backwards and forwards, it forces all of the other pendulums to oscillate. After a short while, the one which oscillates the most is the centre pendulum, the pendulum that is the same length. It's oscillating counter, in other words, it's always travelling in the opposite direction to the driver pendulum. All of the pendulums oscillate, that is forced vibration, but they did only swing a little. The centre pendulum, which was the same length, however, oscillated a lot. And that was because it had the same natural frequency as the driver. That is resonance. Another standard demonstration is a string or elastic cord driven by a vibration generator, as you see here. By the way, if you want to know how to make this extremely cheap generator, there's a link in the information below and at the end to another video. I'm adjusting the frequency so that the elastic cord vibrates at its maximum. I'm not altering the amplitude of vibration or the amount that it's being shaken. I'm simply adjusting the frequency. And then at a particular frequency, about 34 hertz in this case, there is resonance. That is, the frequency of the generator matches the natural frequency of the string. This point of resonance is at the fundamental of the string, where it goes up and down a bit like a skipping rope. Let's see what happens if we increase the frequency. Not changing the amplitude of the amount that it vibrates. I'm just increasing the frequency, which you can see the value of at the top of the screen. As we approach and then get to twice the frequency that we had before, that is twice 34, 68, 69 hertz, you can see there is another resonance point. The string oscillates more than it did before. Notice that there is a point in the middle where it seems not to be moving. We have two loops in the string. This is called the second harmonic. The point in the middle of the string, which was not vibrating, is called the node. The places where it's vibrating most are called antinodes. Pushing up the frequency of vibration further, we get to another point where there are three loops in the string. So there are two nodes in the centre of the string, three loops, and this is called the third harmonic. Notice the frequency is about three times the fundamental, three times 34. As you might guess, if we increase it to four times the fundamental, that's about 136, then we get four loops, the fourth harmonic. Turning the generator around and using a spring, you can see we can induce resonance in a longitudinal wave. Resonance in a flat plate is rather more complex. You've got a sheet of acrylic and on it sprinkled some rice. As we change the frequency, a pattern starts to emerge. The rice moves and moves away from the places where the plate is vibrating rapidly and moves towards the nodes where it's not vibrating at all. I haven't got the plate perfectly flat, but you can see a clear pattern emerging. We sprinkle on a bit more rice and alter the frequency of the generator. Then the pattern is completely different. The occurrence of resonance in all of these different shapes is more than just of academic interest. Many structures and shapes, such as Boats, planes, cars, buses, buildings, bridges are exposed to oscillation and vibration. If they resonate, that can cause a problem. Ways in which we can deal with that are explained in a follow-on video, for which the links are here. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.